Okay, something uh, a little bit magic with this one, actually. Um, what we're going to look at today is uh, two things called Doctopus and Gubrick, um, which which enable us to, well, you'll see in a minute what they enable us to do, but but let's let's say, for example, we have this particular Google Doc writing piece. I want to be able to share this with a, with a group of students, with a class, whatever. I would like them to, to, to obviously have their own copy of this that they're going to write on. I would like to be able to see those. So, I mean, currently my, my options are I could create 30 documents for the students in a class. I could share them individually with them and, and, and do it that way. Um, alternatively, I could share this one and ask them to make a copy of it and then share that back to me. But either way is not, not particularly great. Um, what, what this way will allow us to do is, is to share it straight out to, to a group of students, but also using another tool called Gubric, we can actually attach um, a rubric to it that we can then use for assessment. Um, it's, it's really good. So let's take this to start with. So I've created just a standard Google Doc here, uh, which has got some things that I want the students to, to do and then to, to write on. So what we need to do, first create your doc, but then you need to actually create um, a spreadsheet. So I've got my spreadsheet here, I've already created it. Um, all you actually need on this spreadsheet to do this is the student's first name, last name, and their Google email address. So you can get that, uh, that data quite easily. Um, if anyone's got a problem finding that, I can, I can help you out. So. Once you've got this, obviously I've got myself and, and just one other student, but you would have all of your students here. So, first thing to do, um, if we haven't done anything, uh, first thing to do is to actually add the Doctopus script. Mine appears at the top because I've already added it, but if you go to Tools, Script Gallery, search for Doctopus in here. And there it is, and then you can install that script. But but I already have it. So once it's actually done, we just click Doctopus. Step one, there are some instructions in here as well. So it comes up. So type of sharing that we actually want from this. Now you've got a few options. You can actually add another column to your spreadsheet if you want to split it into groups. Um, same with the differentiated one, they're actually similar. So if you actually have multiple documents at different levels, if you want to differentiate what you're sending out to the students, you can do that. Um, whole class isn't ideal because that's just like sharing it with them all anyway. So they'll all edit the same document. So I'm going to have individual all the same just here. Okay. Uh, okay, so it loads up these extra bits. Um, whole class access, I don't want the class to access each other's, so it's, uh, I'm going to leave that as no access. Individual student, I, of course I want them to be able to edit the document, so I'll put that in there. And then I'll leave this ticked so they can't muck with the um, sharing permissions on it. So that's down there. So here, sheet that contains your student roster, it's sheet 1 here as you can see. Um, it's the only sheet on here. Okay, Their email address is in the email column. You can see that's fine. Okay, now you can tick this if you want to put this to individual folders as well, but I'll leave that blank for now and just click to save the settings. So, I did a little bit of work for you. So, next, what pops up is a box to choose your actual document um, that, that you want to be sharing on. Now, the, the documents have to be in a folder. Um, I'm not sure you don't just get a loose view, you actually get a view of all of your folders. So mine's in a folder called Writing Pieces. And then there it is, Document Writing Piece. So save the settings. Okay, so what we can do here, you can select that, that you want obviously them to go back in the same folder, so all the student versions. So I'll choose Writing Pieces here it'll go back into the same folder uh, or you can create a whole new folder as well if you want to um, it's up to you now what do I want the student files to actually be named um, well I'll just go with can use these strings above so first name writing piece um, notify them yeah I want to notify everyone that they've been shared the, the new document so their email is their email address um, and then you could create a personalized 
email here if you want. Okay. So we click to save that. Okay, it just gives you a summary of what you're going to do. We run and share. And it'll add some extra bits to my spreadsheet now. Just take a moment. Okay, so all successfully shared. So now what we've got on our spreadsheet, you see it looks a little different. The file key, don't worry about at all. Um, we've got a last edit here that, um, that obviously tells us where that document was last edited. And we have a link now to both of these students' um, writing pieces. Now, obviously we can just click on those and it'll actually open the, the document. We've got space here for some simple um, assessment here, some simple feedback, but um, not necessarily what we wanted uh, as far as a rubric goes. So we could give them a grade or, or write a written comment in here. Now, up at the top here, we've got um, some other options now. We can send a personalized email to the students. Um, with that personalized email, we can actually then, um, I've just received my version, personalized email um, you can actually um, send the written feedback as well in that if you wanted from that uh, you can transfer the ownership strictly to the students because currently I own these documents but they are shared with the students so that's fine but if we want to then add a rubric to this as well um, we need to add another um, plugin of sorts here so we had a octopus as an actual script into the spreadsheet but the next one we want is called Gubrick, which is from the Chrome Web Store. Um, to access this one, just, just navigate your way to the Chrome Web Store um, and, and do a search in here for Gubrick, and you'll find it. This has to be done in Chrome. Um, the student end of it can be done in any browser you please, but, but the, actual, um, the actual teacher side you must do in Chrome. So if we, if we add Gubrick in, you'll obviously have a button to install it here, but I've already installed it on here. Um, Go out then um, to our actual spreadsheet. We go to Doctopus and we go to attach a Gubrick. So, okay, gives us some stuff. Make sure you've done this, make sure you've done that, which I have. And then select a rubric. Now, I've actually already created a rubric here. You do it as a spreadsheet. And you must follow the format like this. So you must have numbered um, pieces along the top for the, the different sort of levels within your rubric. It doesn't matter if it's which order, reverse or otherwise, and then obviously some headings for what these, these sections are about. So you have to kind of follow this format. The colors don't matter, it's just to make it look nice. So uh, from that then we can select a rubric. So it'll then quite nicely search through your spreadsheets or find the most recent ones. Here it is with a nice picture. Writing rubric, select. And then we attach this Gubrick to the document. So again, it's doing a little bit of work. Okay. So what you'll see on our spreadsheet is it's created a new um, a new page on here. So we've got our original sheet and we've got some rubric scores, which are just here. Um, which is good. So we're kind of done with spreadsheets for now. So if I actually now go to um, one of these writing pieces, so I'll follow through my one. Here's my copy of the writing piece. You can see the name here, Stu Writing Piece, as, as I told it, I wanted it to be called. And obviously we can write on these, have a look, follow the stuff through. Not a problem at all. Um, which is good. Now, obviously, um, if I, if I just go to one of the other ones here as well, you'll see, because I'm obviously the owner of that one anyway. But let's follow one of these ones through. Now, at any time as a teacher, as I'm going through this list and, and looking at the pieces of writing they've done, now what I can do, if you look at the top, I'll see this little eyeball here, the, um, the Gubrick one. I can click on this. I did authorize it. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. All right, do that again. Just need to authorize it the first time. So now the rubric will load up, which is the rubric that I created. And nicely, look, it sits over. I can obviously minimize it if I want to by clicking on this again and move it away. But it'll sit over the top of what I'm doing. And I can just fill in these different pieces. Oops, I have no five. There we go. I can write a comment on here. Okay, and then what we can do from here, we can email the rubric score to the student, so they'll actually receive a copy of this rubric, um, which is sent out, which I'll actually do on my own one. I won't do it. I might as well with that one. But I'll do it on my own one, because I can show you what that email looks like then as well. Just go back to the other one. Let's load up mine. Let me go. Okay. So it is actually proceeding to the next document, so we'll actually load in the next one for you. What we can then see as well in here, we can see the um, the rubric scores have actually been pre-filled onto here already for us. Um, but obviously, you don't you don't have to look at them that way. You can actually look at them in the other one as well. And the students will have been sent on an email um, with the actual copy of their rubric as well. So very straightforward, really. Um, certainly from from the the student perspective, they just receive the the file shared with them with, with an email you send. They just kind of then work on it and, and, and that's it for them. They don't have to do anything else from a teacher. A little bit of setup, I guess, with adding the, the script and, and the Chrome extension for Gubrick, but, but once you've got it all set up, it's actually quite easy to use.